right now, um, there is a, uh, a plan for May Day, uh, International Workers' Day, which is May 1st. Uh, it's not really a day that people in America celebrate. Like, I think the rest of the world celebrates it, but America is just sort of just like, no, we're going to do the Star Wars thing instead. Star Wars is coming up. You guys want to do the Star Wars thing? Yeah, let's do that one instead of the International Workers' Day thing. Let's, which, like, I don't have anything against Star Wars. I think Star Wars is fine. Uh, out of the, I, I think I'm more of a Star Trek guy at this point. Uh, that I am a Star Wars guy. I like the original movies. Empire is great. Return of the Jedi, very much enjoyed that. The initial trilogy is fine. It's fine. Uh, the sequel trilogies is not... I didn't care for them. Uh, not because there's a Lady Jedi or anything. That's fine. We've had Lady Jedis before. If you watch the animated series, there's a Lady Jedi. If you watch, uh, you know, Ashoka Tano is a Lady Jedi. I like Ahsoka, you know, um, but uh, that trilogy was uh, not cohesive, not well written, not well directed. And uh, there's some cool parts in it. There's some cool parts in it. I won't deny that. But as a whole, the trilogy is uh, not great. It's a, a lot of hot garbage, lots, lots and lots of hot garbage. Um, and pretending like we didn't have strong female characters in the past, uh, which we totally fucking did. Anyway, that's not the point. <laughs> uh, but International Workers' Day is coming up. May 1st, the International Workers' Day is coming up. And uh, there is a rent strike that is being planned uh, for International Workers' Day, for May Day, uh, because that's going to be the next day that rent is going to be due. Um, and so I know we talked about rent strikes before. I know we talked about the concept of rent strikes before, just uh, a, a week or so ago, maybe. Um, you know, and I want to remind people what a rent strike is. A rent strike is not just you going, I declare rent strike. It's not just you screaming into the sky or it's not an individual person saying that they're not going to pay their rent. Uh, it is a uh, organized group of tenants that are engaging in a collective refusal of rent, either partially or fully, um, and it has to be organized. It has to be organized because if it's not organized, uh, you know, then you're there. Th th there is a heightened risk of facing evictions. There is a heightened risk that you will be uh, pulled out of your uh, apartment, that you will face penalties later on, that you will be evicted once we're out of this pandemic situation. Um, because we do have a moratorium on evictions. They are, they are saying you can't evict anybody uh, if they don't want to pay rent, which is, um, which is very nice of them to do, I guess. Um, but, um, you know, it needs to go beyond that. Uh, it, that that's a very short-sighted uh, plan. So that's why, we, that's, that's why if you are a tenant in your, in your situation, in, in, in that situation, you should organize with the other tenants. And we will talk about uh, what steps you can take if you want to organize a rent strike uh, in your community, in your building. And this is primarily against corporate landlords, by the way. Primarily against corporate landlords and uh, bigger, like, real estate companies, bigger property development companies. Um, there's one in Pittsburgh that uh, I, I very much hate because they took away a really amazing venue, a really amazing black owned venue in East Liberty of Pittsburgh. They um, fucking, uh, what do they call Capital, uh, Walnut Capital. They suck, don't support them. Uh, they are a, uh, uh, what I would like to say very politely, are a bag of bastards. They are a bag of bastards. Um, and, you know, how do you make a successful rent strike? Uh, the key to it is solidarity surrounding agreed demands. That's what it has to be. It has to be solidarity surrounding agreed upon demands. Uh, so why would we need a rent strike? Right, because there's a lot of people that are like, this is ridiculous. A rent strike is pointless. You shouldn't be doing a rent strike. Um, you know, this is uh, this is un-American, unconstitutional. It's not freedom. It's co it's communism. You're bringing the Red Scare into the Americas. Um, 
Well, let's look at some numbers of what's going on and why we would need something like this. Uh, 10 million people got laid off, right? And right now, the, the Fed, uh, the Federal Reserve, is predicting the unemployment numbers to reach at 32%. That's Great Depression level shit. Uh, that's, <laughs> you know, um, that's, that's a, that's a depression. That's a, cr that's a total crash of the economic system of, of the quote unquote economic system, the, the made up economic system. Um, 35 million people will lose their employee related health care. Uh, and you know, this is sort of a heart. I, I don't, I don't really think there's any anyone that can convince me against this thought, um, if, if healthcare has to be tied into your employer, uh, that's not freedom. That's not choice. That's not the freedom of choice. That's corporate authoritarianism. That's all it is. That's a hostage situation. That means that these corporations, these, these big businesses, these industries can treat the worker however the fuck they want and if they do something like a strike, if they push back with trying to unionize, um, try to collectively bargain, then these companies get to hold health care uh, and their families as, as, as hostages, essentially, to say, oh, well, you can go on the strike, but you're going to lose that health care. You're going to lose that job. If you lose that job, you lose your health care. That's not choice. Okay. Uh, having, having your health care tied into... Um, into your employment is not freedom. That's corporate authoritarianism and that's holding your health and your family and your family's health as a hostage. And, you know, there's a lot of people that, that want to keep their employee-related health care uh, instead of nationalizing a system where no matter what happens, you still have health care, you still have access to it, you can still go to the doctor, you can still go to a hospital, there's no medical debt involved. Um... And there's a bunch of people that are like, no, we can't do that. We can't have that. That's crazy. That's over the top. That's ridiculous. Uh, that's communism. And that's also uh, Americans having Stockholm Syndrome against the corporations that have held their health and family hostage. That's basically what that is. And that's another thing, right? Uh, there are so many bills that people have to pay that $1,200, Steve Mnuchin comes out and says, oh, that's supposed to last 10 weeks, is what are you talking about? That proves that the oligarchs don't understand how money and time works, right? Somebody should have just been like, no, Steve, that's, it, it, takes, you, it takes you 10 weeks to get through $12 million. And they're like, oh, 12, oh, oh, thousands, hundreds, million, whatever. <laughs> it's all meaningless to me. Because uh, I have so much money and I never have to worry about it. Like That's how these people think, right? They just don't understand what it is. They don't understand the struggle that people have to go through every single day. Um, you know, So along with rents, you have car payments, you have credit card payments, you have uh, medical debt that's not going away. All of these things when people don't have jobs. Um, so, you know, that is... That is why we need a, a rent strike. That's why we're. That's why people are organizing. That's why people need to stand in solidarity with each other. Um, you know. So, so what are the basic demands for rent? First off, first and foremost, um, rent suspension. Uh, right now, there's some places that are doing moratoriums on rent, um, and that basically means the landlord's like, "Don't worry about paying me now. You can pay me whatever." Uh, Whenever you can, but you're just, but it's it's essentially back pay, right? So we get into this situation. People don't have jobs, they lose their income, they can't pay their rent in April. The landlord says, "Well, that's okay. We can't evict you. You pay me whenever you can. We'll we'll add this to the end." So now what? Uh, so now if you know, if you paid first month's last month's and then put down a deposit, uh, like a security deposit, well, then that's great. So security deposit gets used for this rent, but then it can't be used when you move out to a different apartment. So that still doesn't really help. It still puts you in that cycle of debt and bullshit. 
And then we come out of the situation and people can go back to, um, you know, making an income. But that means that they're going to have to spend a month just trying to earn rent. That's not helping the people. And even if they have to, so, so now what? So now they start a payment plan. So on top of car loans, on top of a possible credit card bill, on top of uh, utility bills, which are also in the same status as this rent, they have to add another bill on top of that. I'm sure there's a bunch of people, oh, well, they should just work harder. Yeah, a lot of Americans work two jobs. There's people that work at warehouses. There, there are people that have full-time jobs. There are people that work 40 hours a week, and then we'll have to drive for Uber. We'll have to do DoorDash. We'll have to go and work the night shift, um, you know, at, uh, at some security company or work the, work the evening shift at a grocery store. I fucking did that, and it was a nightmare. I was exhausted. I never saw. Uh, I never. I never got to spend time with my girlfriend for a while. I. I was barely doing comedy. I was incredibly unhappy. Incredibly unhappy. And that's the status that America wants people to live in, because that's American exceptionalism. I guess is overworked, underpaid, completely exhausted, and morally destroyed fucking working class people so that some one person can get rich. These back payments don't work. These back, pay these back payments are not going to uh, help. What they do is they do secure that the status quo is put into place. And the status quo is the reason why we are in this in the first place. So why would you want to go back to the status quo? It's an illogical argument to keep making. So here's how the system works, right? The renters pay the landlords. The landlords pay the banks. Um, the banks got $5 trillion. The banks of Wall Street got $5 trillion immediately. Like, no question. They didn't have to go fill out a fucking form. They didn't have to go to a website that was barely functioning. They didn't have to wait uh, on, on a phone call for two, three hours like most Americans did just to get their 1200 bucks, just to get their unemployment. They just got it. Congress was like, dunzo. The Fed was like, we just invented money. We did, we did one of these, and the money was there. We went into a hat, and we pulled out a big fucking check and just handed it to the banks. No problem. The banks already had the money. So if the landlord is worried that they're going to have to pay the bank back, the bank already has the money. They don't fucking need your money. They don't need the renter's money. They don't need the landlord's money. What this could be is if you're a small business landlord, you should stand in solidarity with the renters and say, I'm calling for a mortgage strike. The banks got $5 trillion bailed out, and now they want more money, more money which we don't have. And this is, by the way, the way that this economy is supposed to work, right? The bottom takes care of the top, essentially. The bottom is, is the foundation that everything else is built on. And now they're asking the bottom to handle more weight. And physically speaking, that's impossible. It's, it's become a top-heavy system, and it's doing this. Uh, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to fall. It's going to topple. That's where we are. We're at the topple point. Um, and basically, we're saying, we're not going to catch you. We're going to let you collapse. We're going to let you crash. Why would we fucking catch you? Now, you could, now, the other argument can be made, well, the landlords got the small business loans. They were able to, these small business landlords were, well, they didn't. Nobody did. <laughs> Seriously, nobody did. I'm, I'm doing these conversations with the small business owners, and nobody is getting anything. If they're getting something, it's like these minute, small little amounts. And the SBA loans were, 
like, oh, it'll cover, a, you know, payroll. It'll be $1,000 per employee or something along those lines. It'll give you a maximum of $10,000 or you can you can have loan free 10,000 but then everything up to the uh, after that is going to have to be paid off um you know so it's like and and it wasn't anything special that you couldn't have gotten before before this crisis in the first place so you know this and this crisis wasn't caused by the middle class it wasn't caused by the working class people so why are the working class people being punished for for this crisis in the first place why are we having to bear the brunt of it the, the SBA loans did go to um, big corporations. Ritz Chris Strake House, Cheesecake Factory, Subway, Olive Garden. They got they got they got the, the money and they're and one hundred percent guaranteed they'll never have to pay it back. They'll never have even though they probably can right now they could pay it back. They could have paid the loan back before they even fucking got it. But instead, not only do they get these loans, but then they also, they're going on a rent strike. These corporations are doing a rent strike. In their own little way, they're doing it, too. There's cases where Subway, Cheesecake Factory, places like that, that basically said, hey, we're not paying rent for April. Too bad, so sad. Go fuck yourself. Ask the you know, the, the mom and pop pizza shop next door to pay their rent and that'll cover ours. Double up on them. Don't come to us. We're Subway. We're a small, we're a small business. If Subway is a, a small business, then I'm a fucking power lifter. I'm I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger circa 1982. Cheesecake Factory, they basically said we're not paying. And then they were just like, we're probably not going to pay May. And if you have a problem with it as a landlord, then you can deal with it because we're not leaving. And these guys not only got bailed out by a corporate slush fund, but they also acquired a small business loan. And they got a check as dense as the red velvet cheesecake that they served for nineteen ninety nine. So really, if anything, these small business landlords that are complaining and they look at things like a rent strike as a blow to them, they should be looking at that and saying, you know what, I'm going to join in. And I'm going to push back against the banks. Because the banks are, 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 are threatening my house and my business and my industry. And I applied for this small business loan and it went to a corporation that was already refusing to pay its rent in the first place. And nobody fucking said anything about it. Nobody shits on them. Nobody sits there and says they're unconstitutional and they're being un-American and this, that, and the other thing. Nobody sits there and says, oh, liberty, 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 freedom, 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 protesting outside. Nobody does that shit for Subway or Cheesecake Factory or Olive Garden or anything like that. They only get pissed off when the working class do it. When the working class people stand up, there's all this propaganda about socialism and, and, and how socialism is communism and conflating that fucking argument. They do the red scare, the McCarthyist bullshit over and over again. They confuse people about what these ideas actually are. Nobody goes after the corporations. The other half of it, too, is a rent freeze is the other thing that they're talking about, which basically means there's not going to be an increase in rent. And this should be a universal idea. Nobody should be increasing rent right now, right? Like, just because the, we, we talked about this when we talked about the, the movement for a people's party is if you're going to do a universal basic income, then that comes with rent control. Just because somebody's getting, you know, um, for the sake of simplicity of math, $1,000 a month, just because somebody's getting $1,000 a month doesn't mean that you get to increase your rent by $700. That's not the point. The system is trying to create an e equality through um, finances. And if you jack up your rent, that's not, that's not creating equality. You're just furthering the problem. And the universal basic income isn't the problem. Your fucking greed is. And your fucking greed has always been the problem.
So um, let's look at uh, how you can organize something like this. So if you're if you're saying, you know what, I'm seeing a lot of people in my building. Uh, we're owned by this corporate landlord. We're owned by this 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 uh, real estate company that owns 12, 13 buildings. Um, you know, and they're threatening to raise our rents. They're threatening to back. You know, they're threatening to evict us after all this is done. Blah blah blah. Um, and you want to push back. Here, here's what uh, Shama Savant, uh, socialist council member in Seattle, who has successfully pushed back against Amazon, uh, who has successfully ensured that people don't get evicted in the winter uh, in Seattle. Uh, she's great. She's fantastic. I wholly support everything that she's doing. Um, plus, she is. Uh, she's an Indian lady, so it's fucking double solidarity on that front, right? Like, more brown representation, uh, and not just that, more fucking, more fucking worker solidarity brown representation. <laughs> you can't fucking defeat that shit. More socialist, worker-supported, fucking working-class brown solidarity. That's, that's what that is. Uh, so, they, uh, she did a, a, a live stream the other, the other week. Uh, last week, um, wh and I was watching most of it, and uh, there's a lot of stories about people um, that are, you know, in a pretty tough position, um, and uh, what they're doing, they're, you know, uh, there's a lot of tenants unions that are, um, uh, that are organizing this rent strike. We saw the LA Tenants Union uh, that Rompel Cohn uh, showed on his page that they were protesting and they were calling for a rent strike. They were calling for uh, essentially corrupt landlords to get what they deserved, uh, calling for a rent freeze. Um, so here's how you can organize something like this, especially for May Day, right, for, for May 1st. Um, a bunch of places have done this, Philadelphia Tenants Union being one of them. Uh, there's another one called Unite Here 23 in Alexandria, Virginia, uh, that is also doing that. And so let's take a look. Uh, so here's what it starts. Start with a discussion with your fellow tenants and aim to get commitments uh, from preferably a supermajority or just a majority. So anywhere between 50 and 75 percent is what you want to aim for. Um, that gives you, you know, solidarity. That gives you more people that um, that, you know, are in a tough position uh, that will um, sign off on something like this and will we'll, we'll essentially stand with you. And the, and the more numbers there are, the better it is, right? Uh, so you should have what we talked about earlier, which is a set of demands clearly, clearly written out uh, so that there isn't any sort of like loopholes that, that you can use or they can't say like, oh, look at this. This is not really organized. This is so silly like you're you don't even know what you're doing and they can kind of trash you that way so form form a list of demands first and then approach it from there right then go to your then go to your tenants um and talk to them show them what you what you're working with uh have one-on-one -on -one conversations with each person sharing your situation ask them how they are taking care of their needs and their family um and then ask them to sign a demand letter so again that's going to help kind of legitimize this thing uh, so then make sure that every person who signed gets a phone call within 24 hours to welcome them and explain how they can get involved. Uh, give them a link to, to, to share with them, brainstorm when they can. Use group text, drive daily content, updates, video links, um, action announcement. Uh, keep sending out the domain letter. Because if you remember, one of the things um, that gets people kind of excited, like, on board with the idea of strikes, on board with the idea of these labor movements, is that it has to be present in their face, is that people have to um, see it pretty constantly. Like, it has to be in front of them, um, and then they can go, yeah, okay, this seems like this is doable. If it's just sort of a, a, it happens here and there, the attention span of people is not that high. So if it's constantly in their face, then it's like, okay, yes, let's do this. Uh, organize a weekly Zoom chat, um, help train tenant to become spokesperson for the struggle. So, so helping people like become better public speakers too. 
um, or finding someone that is a good public speaker that can collect these stories. And when, you know, somebody needs to be the public speaker, they have these stories. You know, Mrs. Jones from Apartment 4A, uh, she has two kids. She's a single mom. She lost her job. She was, uh, she, you know, she was an, an accountant. Um, can't really do any of that. She was a, 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 a you know, solo business person. Um, now she's got uh, her kids, she's got bills to pay, she's got food, she's got mouths to feed. You know, her, her ex-husband is MIA, he's disappeared from all this stuff. We don't know where he's at. And she's struggling and she needs a little bit of help. And, and not having to pay rent, not having to worry about back pay on rent is going to really help this person out. Um, you know, stuff like that. And I just kind of made that story up there. But, you know, somebody that knows how to talk um, with these stories. So who are your fellow tenants? If you live in a large building, then the tenants are just uh, the, just the people that live in the building. Um, do you know if the building is owned by a corporation or uh, that owns other buildings in the neighborhood cities? If yes, then you can try and contact tenants in other buildings and you can find out uh, from property records research online. There's a lot of these corporations that Walnut Capital that I mentioned owns a shit ton of buildings in the city of Pittsburgh. And they, uh, they're they a little bit easier to find because they fucking plaster themselves. You know, like they have their name up on all the buildings that they own. Um, so, yeah. Uh, if you live in a small property, then you will need to reach out to uh, the landlord's other properties. So if you have like a small business landlord or if you know that it's kind of a if it's if it's a person that kind of owns a bunch of different properties, um, then, you know, you got to. You got to talk to the you got to figure out where these other properties are that might not be as public. It might be in that property record search, though. Um, so the last point is, if you live in a landlord's only property then unfortunately it is extremely unlikely a rent strike will work and a negotiation is the best bet but you should still get connected uh, with the rent strike movement um, so for her you can contact her city council office there's also rent strike 2020 you can look that up that is a organization that is um, collecting signatures and um, you know getting this rent strike movement going teaching people how to organize a rent strike uh, and they have some valuable resources um, uh, on on their website as well. And that's something that Shama Savant uh, has, um, you know, organized with that that she has kind of worked work, worked with together. Uh, so what are what are some things that we should be concerned about in terms of a rent strike? Uh, right now, there's a moratorium and eviction, but. But what's going to happen afterwards? That's kind of the concern that I think a lot of people are going to have. It does open the doors uh, for these landlords to say that they are going to evict people um, that go on strike. Kind of the same thing of, of when people go on strike at, at their jobs, they can lose their jobs, right? Um, these corporations or these, these landlords can make the same claim. Uh, but I think that's a reality regardless. Let's say you can't make a payment plan. Let's say you can't pay back your back rent within 90 days or 120 days or how much ever little leeway they give you. Or your payment plan doesn't really add up because you can't afford to take on another debt right now. You were, I mean, there's so many people that can't afford a $400 emergency. They can't afford a $1,000 emergency. Do you really think that adding on another debt, especially a rent debt or a mortgage debt, is, is, is going to fucking help people? They're scathing by as it is. They were just getting by as it is. Okay. Are you going to increase people's wages by 50%, 60%? Once we come out of this thing, how are small businesses supposed to do that when they didn't receive any fucking money? They're not looking to do that shit. So right now we have to fight for what's 
what we have to fight for, which is right now it's a rent suspension and freeze. We have to demand this stuff. We have to fight for what's right. And, you know, we can't wait till people are getting kicked out of their homes. People are getting evicted out of their apartments. You got to do it now. You got to do it so that in the future, th it doesn't give them an opportunity to do that. That's why these rent strikes are important. That's why we should be standing in solidarity with each other. And if you're a landlord, then you should be fighting to not get your building foreclosed on. To make sure that a mortgage strike is part of this. That the word rent can be substituted for mortgages. So now homeowners can be involved in this. The numbers just keep getting bigger at this point, right? So some people are saying, oh, it's unconstitutional. You can't, uh, it's property rights. It's private property rights. Um, you know, you can't do that. You can't ask them to, um, you know, th this is private businesses. They can operate the way that they want to. Um, you know, you can't do something like this. It's unconstitutional. Um, is it unconstitutional to ask people to give up a majority, if not all of their income, and then bail out the corporations that have been making hand over fist even before all of this stuff, that have the money to get through a crisis like this, that can get through a crisis like this, that hide their money on offshore accounts in Delaware? Isn't that unconstitutional? And if it's not, then maybe we need a new fucking constitution. Maybe we need to rewrite some shit. Maybe we need a better working class constitution. Maybe we need a working class bill of rights. We need a bill of rights that's actually going to, to, to matter to people. And not just when it comes to corporations. We don't turn a blind eye when Subway doesn't want to pay their rent. And say, okay, that's fine. We don't turn a blind eye when the Small Business Association gives fucking loans hand out loans to bigger corporations, to chain restaurants. And by the way, you can replace the word constitutional with the word American, same fucking thing. We need a, we need a better America, if that's the case. So I encourage you, if you're, if you're a small business landlord, that is looking at this situation and going, what about me? You know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to gouge people's rents. I'm trying to keep my building uh, intact. I'm trying to keep ownership of my building. I'm trying to feed my family as well. Well, I encourage you to stand in solidarity with these renters and demand for a suspension and freeze of mortgages. I mean, really, how powerful of a display would that be? You got renters, you got small business landlords and you have homeowners standing up against fucking real estate giants and banks and how i mean if we did this on a national level how big of a display would that be how big of a display would that be if it was residential and commercial renters homeowners small business landlords standing up for more ethical more compassionate, more understanding housing rights. What kind of change do you think that would make for the future? That when we come out of this, that we don't need to go back to that status quo, that we can look at some alternative ideas, that we can look for some better ideas. This is to try to look for a, a way beyond this pandemic. This is to look for a, a plan for a better future in creating a, a better America, a literal United States, a solidarity states of America, rather than this corporate state of America that we're living in now. That's what this rent strike is fighting for. That's why May Day is going to be important. Hey, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you are new to this channel, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you get notifications when uh, I put up new videos. I'm going to be putting up videos every single day, so there's going to be a ton of content coming out on this channel. Uh, there's going to be storytelling. 
uh, commentary about the media, uh, historical commentary, philosophical commentary, all surrounding uh, stand-up comedy. If you, if you like comedic commentary about these topics, then this is the channel for you. Uh, and if you uh, come to the channel often and you haven't subscribed, what, 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 what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Get, get, get subscribed to this. Come, come hang out with us. <laughs> but uh, for more information about me, you can go to my website, uh, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Uh, while you're there, you can check out all of my past stand-up comedy albums, which if you snag them from Bandcamp are available as pay what you want, which means that they're uh, available for free. Uh, you can check out past videos, you can check out past podcasts, and uh, you can donate if you have the ability to make a one-time donation or become a sustaining member. You can donate directly on my website and become a sustaining member directly on my website. And Or you can see how, you know, the various different ways that you can make a donation. And you can also find out about live stand-up comedy events. Well, live-ish stand-up comedy events. I'm going to be doing uh, a test show on Zoom. Uh, tickets are available for that right now. They are free, and there's only 10 spots available. This is going to be a test show to find out, you know, what format's going to work, if there are technical difficulties that I need to figure out, and then figuring out uh, what consistent day to try to do um, these Zoom shows. I'll probably do a couple of them uh, while we are uh, currently in the quarantine situation. So that is available. Uh, the tickets for that are available right now. There's only 10 spots available. Uh, so make sure that you grab them um, before they're all gone. And then once we decide the date for the first official live-ish stand-up <laughs> comedy Zoom show, the virtual stand-up comedy show, uh, there will be um, about 15 tickets available for the first one. Uh, and then we'll we'll go from there and we'll see see what happens from there. Uh, so grab those tickets and come hang out with us uh, on the Zoom. Uh, like I said, make sure that you're subscribed. Make sure that you hit that like. Make sure that you share this out. Get the word out about these videos. And, uh, and you can go to my website to find out more stuff. Uh, Till the next video, take it easy.